This one is called, Does Animation Quality Actually Matter? And yes, of course it matters. It's an anime, which is a shortened form for animation. What does animation mean? It means shit's moving around. What are you adapting? Mangas, light novels, other stuff. The whole point is to make those, you know, these just drawings come to life. Of course it does. Give it to me. As a content creator who focuses quite heavily on animation quality, production values and the like, I often find myself on the receiving end of comments like, why are you so nitpicky? Just enjoy the show or just be grateful. Why are you nitpicky? Just be grateful it's even happening is the stupidest and the most cucked mindset you can have as a consumer. Why is it that your first instinctive thing is to glaze corporate grease, these corporations that's giving a mid product? You should demand better for yourself. But maybe deep inside, you don't even think you deserve better. It's so fucking cringe to see stupid kids say this stuff. It's beyond me. Well, that insert manga hair is getting adapted. And this is stupid. Like, just be grateful it's even getting adapted. Because it's so bad. Future seasons might not even fucking happen. You're so stupid that you don't even understand how this business model even works. And the more people demand for better shit, and they even go as far to boycott these animes, hit them where the fucking wallet hurts, let some other studio pick it up years down the road. I'm fine waiting another fucking five years for Blue Lock to get an actual proper adaptation or Tower of God. But again, it's stupid. Stupid kids that have no understanding of how the world actually works saying this dumb shit. Just crazy. And that to me is fascinating. Make no mistake, people do care about animation quality more now than ever before. They do care about the overall production value of a show. If they didn't, shows like Blue Lock and Uzumaki wouldn't make headlines. The wrong kind of headlines, mm -hmm. but headlines regardless. Loki, I can't believe Tower of God's getting away with this right now, bro. <laughs> just Blue Lock and Uzumaki. Tower of God just also should be just getting crucified. Do they know about the subject? Not really, not for the most part, but they do care about it. But still, for some reason, putting emphasis on the technical side of anime production is considered nitpicky. Why, I wonder. Perhaps people don't care about the topic enough. Hear me out. Most agree that production value is important. Absolutely. But the common consensus seems to be that at the end of the day, the story is the most important component and the production is is just an accessory and I no I, I do not agree with that I do think that if you're gonna give like let's just take Demon Slayer for example and maybe it's not the best example but it's the story is ass there is no story it's not supposed to be a deep story and that's fine because the hype animations the hype fight is what carries right you can't tell me that Demon Slayer is on the same level of writing as ReZero or Vinland Saga right come on let's not get it twisted but the fact that the animation is so good has just created this worldwide sensation because most people watching that shit, the demographic is young kids, right? There's more of them that's willing to watch that shit than, you know, grown ass fucking men with, you know, kids to take care of, you know, nine to five. So in terms of like getting the biggest numbers, having movie tier quality and having battle shown and be the target audience will often result in big hits. But a great story can also be, I think a great story is more important and amazing you know um, animation it is maybe not the most important thing but pretty much like the second most important thing if even if you have an amazing story you're doing disservice to the source material by not adapting it properly with the animation it deserves blue lock for example is a fucking sports anime of all shows right let, let, even like let's say classroom of the elite i had the notion i had the mindset that classroom of the elite you know what studio lurch they're kind of butchering it they're cutting a lot of shit out. The animation is very unimpressive. But because the entire story is about the dialogue, the conversations, the mental games, the deception, the lies, right? You don't really need... It's, it's, it's the last kind of anime that you need good animation. A good story can carry. But at the same time, these conversations, these dialogues and stuff, even if fights aren't happening, even if it's not a sports genre, having amazing scenes where Things feel livid and like moving, just like Kaguya-sama. I think Kaguya-sama is a great example where even though there isn't fights or sports shit happening and it's all conversations, they keep it very engaging because the animation is 
very good for it. So I think that story and animation production value, they need to come together. And the notion that only story matters and you know, you don't you shouldn't care about production value, that is so fucking retarded, especially in a sports genre. I disagree. Oh, we are getting controversial up in this. I can't say it yet. It hasn't been 30 seconds. I'll get demonetized. I think the all around production value of a show isn't less important or even equally as important as the story. I think it's more important. There's mm. your hot take. You've had enough weekly. All right. Production value is even more important than the story. Let's get it. And I mean, it depends on what the goal is. If you take the Demon Slayer example, you don't really need a good story. Just make it fucking pop and you'll get the big numbers. So it's again, it's about what is your goal? What does like better or like what do you when you prioritize something? What is your goal? And for him, I'm not really sure. He slop. Time for some actual content. Buckle up. Also, when I say production value, I'm referring not just to the animation, mm. but also to the designs, the art direction, the storyboards, the music, yes. the sound design and the direction. Absolutely. Our, the production value is a very vague term, but with all these different things encompassing, one could definitely make the argument that it's way more important than the story. Which ties all of these things together. Basically, everything that's not the story falls into my definition of production value. Okay. And yes, that makes the title ever so slightly misleading, but you clicked on it. I won. Back to the topic. <laughs> yeah, and I'm farming it, so I win too. I think that um, a great soundtrack can actually carry a show. Even if the animation is garbage, having goaded soundtracks, like how many mid anime did, you know, exist with like Hiroyuki Sawano making the soundtrack, right? That's production value, hard carrying the story, man. Like at hand, you might think I've lost my mind that the Sakuga bug has finally taken over my brain. How can the production value matter more than the story? That's like saying the bottle matters more than the drink that's in it. And to that, I say your view is narrow minded. To okay. build on that bottle analogy, if the story is the drink, the production value isn't just the bottle. It's the chair you're sitting on as you drink. It's the room you're in. Great example, right? People are focused on one type of, like, a production value is only animation. No, the whole storyboard direction, voice acting, soundtracks, everything that goes on beyond the scenes, right? You're, it's all part of the experience. It's the color of the walls. It's the movie you're watching. Yo, is this freshest anime? Why is Baldi making a entrance in this video right now. Watching as you take a sip and it's the device you're watching the movie on. Anime is an audiovisual medium and as such, the audio and the visual matter a lot, mm -hmm. a lot more than you think. It is possible to take a mediocre story and turn it into an excellent anime through strong production. Yeah, Demon Slayer, bro. I think that it is like the perfect example where the story is mediocre. And Demon Slayer doesn't need to have a deep story. It doesn't need to be just like this Shakespearean fucking art. But the production value surrounding it, the way that you foldable understands what Demon Slayer's strengths are and just leaning into it, it is just mega hit series. And of course, I'm not taking any names, Demon Slayer. I'm not. Right there, Demon Slayer. Not singling out anyone, should Demon Slayer. But on the flip, all right, I'll acknowledge the unnecessary Demon Slayer slander. Yeah. You see, I was a manga. I don't even think it's Demon Slayer's slander. Like, let's just be honest here. Does it have a strong story? No. But does it need to have a strong story? No. What is Demon Slayer? It's a hype battle shonen. You don't need that, right? Just because we're saying that Demon Slayer is a weak story doesn't mean it's slander. We're talking about the goals that these different projects have and how they're able to succeed. Reader up until the entertainment district arc, but then I rage quit because of how infuriatingly dull the manga was. However, the anime, which is quite faithful, mind you, made me love this arc and the stuff that followed for the most part which proves my point. Anyway, as I was saying, on the flip side, an excellent story will always be handicapped by substandard production. With I agree. An excellent story will always be handicapped by mid-production. I agree. It, it struggles, right? It definitely struggles. A production value with good production value can just enhance that story so much whether you notice it or not. So just how important is this production value I speak of? Well, let's find out. Let's talk about the individual components that make up this all-encompassing, all-important production value, starting with animation. Hey, maybe the title wasn't clickbait after all. 
also the value of animation which also includes drawing power by the way is more for certain genres action for example mm. you can't create a good action scene without good action animation exactly some shows just need good animation right and some shows can get away without good animation classroom of the elite for example it's all conversation dialogue based but still having way good animation to highlight those dialogue scenes will just enhance the moment and then you have the opposite spectrum like blue lock where the entire fucking show is about the sport you're running around you're kicking shit many things are happening things need to move and for production value for animation to be lackluster in a genre like sports what the fuck are you doing? And since action animation by its very nature is resource intensive, so the value of animation skyrockets when talking about the action genre, which by the way, is the biggest genre of anime by far. Like, mm -hmm. it's not even remotely close. And why is the action genre the biggest genre ever? Just think about the demographic watching this stuff, right? Who do you think has more free time to be watching anime all day? 12 year old kid you know a high school kid that has no job no responsibility depressed about their fucking future outlook so all they do is cope and fucking escape to anime or a grown ass man that's too busy working at fucking nine to five by the time they come home they got a fucking wife and kids to take care of and they have like one hour free time right Think about the type of genres that attracts the type of audiences that exist and everything makes sense. Close. Here's a question. What to you is the most memorable recent anime fight? Think about it. Most memorable anime fight? Honestly, I should be mentioning some Tower of God stuff, but I can't because Tower of God is so fucking mid. Wistoria stands out to me. The... You know, the episode like 11 or 12, the, basically the reveal that Will is, you know, something more than just, you know, a lagger. That scene went fucking crazy. So that stands out to me right now. Chances are it's either Sukuna versus Mahoraga or a One Piece fight. And notice how both options look spectacular. That's mm -hmm. the point. Sukuna versus Mahoraga in particular is a textbook example of animation quality being a crucial component of a fight. It wasn't a masterclass in writing. The aftermath was, but not the fight itself. And it wasn't trying to be one. The fight consisted of a mindless monster fighting a mindful monster. Monster. It relied completely on the spectacle aspect of it and yep. that was made possible by the animation. Yeah, if you have great animation to make a fight that is so significant to pop off like this, people are going to remember Jujutsu Kaisen a lot more than for the stories and the themes it's telling. Because, you know, hype fights, it gets your just dopamine going, right? Your monkey brains are happy about it. But perhaps it's unfair to look at the single most ambitious fight in TV anime history. Not every well-animated fight will look that insane. Is good animation necessary even when it's less ambitious by several orders of magnitude? Why not? Even if it's not like the most significant fight of the century, I think animation is always a necessity. Why wouldn't you want to have good animation to represent the source material that you love and enjoy, even if it's not a demon slayer or Jujutsu Kaisen? Then the aforementioned Sukuna fight, you might have a point. So how about this then? You give me an example of an excellent anime fight that features poor animation and drawings. Not fights that were great in their manga form. Good anime fights with poor visuals. Go ahead. How does that even make sense, right? A good anime fight with poor visuals? That is the most contradictory thing. One cannot exist without the other, right? You need to have good animation to have a good fight. If it's poor animations, poor visuals, how can it be a good fight? Just look at Blue Lock or Tower of God right now, right? All this shit isn't moving. You can't say that it's a good fight because the fight didn't even happen. There are exceptions to every rule. There might as well be a few. That's what the comments are for. Done? Alright, so chances are you picked older shows or low priority fights from long running anime as your example. And firstly, the fight you picked probably features good drawings even if you think it doesn't. And secondly, the era of long running action shows is over. We have seen what seasonal action highlights can look like and Seasonal action highlights is so much better than long running shonen shows that spans across decades, hundreds and hundreds of episodes. Motherfuckers can't have the time to properly you know, allocate resources. Everything is just stalling for time. It's way better. I think the way that My Hero Academia, Jujutsu Kaisen, Demon Slayer approach their you know, adaptation to their shows is so much better than Naruto Bleach One Piece. I mean, just look at Bleach right now. Look at the glow up that Bleach Thousand Year Blood War is happening. 
because of the way that just significantly changed the way that they're doing, you know, seasonal anime, right? They have more time to properly schedule, properly prepare. It's way more better than before, in my opinion. I don't think we as a fan base can settle for anything less at this point. Even long running shows know that One Piece, for example, has pulled out all the stops for quite some time now, producing one highlight for the episode after another and literally going on break to presumably prevent a dip in quality because and that break is necessary. You should be happy that there is a break because if there wasn't. Oh my God, the shit that you want to see is going to be so mid. They know it will be disastrous. Basically, long story short, most memorable fights feature top-notch animation. Yep. Whether it's those well-choreographed fights from Naruto or Cowboy Bebop, or those dynamic action sequences from Attack on Titan, whether it's those flashy fights from newer IPs like Jujutsu Kaisen and Demon Slayer, or those lesser-known combat scenes that put entire shows on the map. The it's just such a crazy thing that if you disagree with this notion, because like, how can you have a good fight with poor visual, right? How does that ever make sense to you? It, it is the most contradictory thing because the visuals are what makes the fight. But if the visuals are bad, then the fight is also bad. It's just one plus one equals two moment here. Lack of good action animation is a death sentence for an action show. PNGs moving around with poorly drawn effects on top Blue just lock. doesn't hit the same as the kids say. Animation prowess is also needed by other genres of course. Sports for example. Just look at these two recent sports titles. The Haikyuu movie and Blue Lock season 2. Do I need to elaborate? I don't think. I haven't seen Haikyuu, but I haven't heard of, you know, Haikyuu drama saying, oh my god, they ruined this. I'm gonna assume that it's way, way better. I do. Basically, the more a genre revolves around a physical action of some kind, the more strong animation it needs. Action yes. involves fighting, a form of movement, and sports involve motion, aka the characters playing the sport in question. In this manner, good animation is needed for storytelling purposes. Yes, it's necessary in these genres. If you have fight it's happening if you have a lot of action movements of course you're going to need better animation but what about other genres does a slice of life need top-notch animation not necessarily but they definitely can improve it right this whole doesn't need animation is kind of ambiguous right but if we're talking about the relative you know entertainment value someone will have in watching an anime of course, Shonen Seinen or like, you know, action based shows needs a lot more animation to look good. While a slice of life that may be more chill, just talking, you know, it doesn't need as much, but doesn't mean that it can just get away with poor animation. Because again, those dialogues, these, you know, moments of just, you know, conversations, there can be a lot of, of a, it, it can be way more enhanced if you actually improve the you know the animation like 10 story season 3 i think really missed out on opportunity same with class from the elite where all the dialogues are just fucking static frames just talking and just mouth moving there's ways to make it engaging just look at kaguya sama and how they do it not necessarily, although it can elevate a show just look at literally everything kyoto animation has yeah. ever a1 Pictures too, the way they did Maki and Heroin recently, that shit was a fucking, it was so good. Everything was moving, it felt alive. It was better animated than most fucking fight enemies being pumped out on a seasonal basis. Produced. On the other end of the spectrum, bad animation can cripple a show regardless of the genre. Listen yep. to this bit of audio from Hell's Paradise Episode 8. It's an action show, I know, but this... Oh, Hell's Paradise, mid Paradise, bro. ...particular scene doesn't feature any fighting. <laughs> Amazing, right? So <laughs> lazy motherfuckers. Still frame with voice happening. I might as well just watch a bit. Like, I might as well read a fucking audiobook, bro. Like, what am I doing? So much emotion packed into the voice lines, which, by the way, is a direct extension of the story. Now, look at the visuals that accompanied this scene. <laughs> It just, it doesn't hit the same. A 
amazing animation. Him does it. The movement looks comical. It feels yeah. like the voice lines are from a different show. Okay, yeah. that's cheating. Not every show <laughs> looks as bad as Hell's Paradise. It Ooh, I love the Hell's Paradise slander right now, bro. It is an outlier. That's what you might be thinking, but you are wrong. Yes, stuff usually doesn't look that bad, but stuff doesn't usually look good either. Vivid character acting isn't the baseline of anime visuals. The baseline is a moderately well-drawn frame with a looped mouth flap. Character mm. acting is an increasingly rare commodity. Therefore, a large amount of emotional scenes across a wide range of shows end up looking unremarkable. Yes, that happens because of how fundamentally broken the modern anime industry is, but that's besides the point. The point is, as long as a scene features some motion or emotion, good animation is needed. The yep. absence or the lack of it can significantly reduce the impact a scene has on the viewer. Of course, on the flip side, poor writing can be compensated for by excellent visuals. There are countless examples of that. I, however, won't... There is just so much evidence to suggest that production value indeed is more importance that than the actual story and thinking about the whole baseline concept and how you know poor story or good story they can both be crippled or enhanced through these animations it's like a make or break won't name any for real this time the demon slayer fan base was enough i don't particularly intend on angering anyone else animation is important very much so however animation isn't all there is to the term visuals which has a broader definition stuff okay. like character designs art direction storyboards and short compositions the use of colors etc etc all fall under the wider term visuals People say visuals and production in general complements a story, but I think it does more than that. I think production reimagines a story. Clever storyboards, for example, can give the viewer more reasons to look at a shot, but that's not all. They can pack additional meaning into a scene and mm. they can uncover brand new dimensions of the story. And that's right. Through symbolism and imagery, the way that the visuals can be done to portray what the underlying themes are in a source material absolutely can be further enhanced. And as always, poor direction can nerf the potential of an otherwise good story. Besides that, art direction, when well executed, can breathe life into a show. It can make the world feel lived in. Just look at Free Ren. Yep. Generic art direction, on the other hand, can make the story come off as one note and formulaic. I have covered the topics of direction, character designs, and visual storytelling countless times before, so I won't ramble on for too long. But basically, an anime without meaningful direction is like a car without the wheels. It might have a powerful engine, but it can't go anywhere. An anime without good direction is like a car without wheels. Can't go anywhere. My analogy game is on point today. Yeah, the analogies are hidden. I can visualize it and it makes you understand better. Isn't it? All of that was one half, possibly a bit more of the term production. The other remaining half consists of... Down. Yeah, soundtrack I think is so, so important. And I think sound is more than just soundtrack. There's also obviously voice acting, sound effects. If you've seen Sorter Online, Project Adicization, right? Season 3, Season 4, A1 Pictures, the way that your sound effect is sometimes... Just, it's, it's more as fucking shock value sometimes, but there, it definitely does enhance it, right? And the voice acting, the soundtrack, those things I think is so, so important. Like Konosuba? Konosuba, the comedy, works because of the soundtrack and the sound effects. And the way that the people know how when to like just, just cut music and have nothing play, you know? Like that's just one example of many where sound can actually just transform the show entirely. Now, I'm not including voice acting in this category, perhaps I should, but I feel like it's a direct extension of the story. I'll mainly talk about music and sound direction, and it's fairly self-explanatory. Good, relevant music and meaningful sound direction can make or break a scene, mm -hmm. especially important ones. Just think of the sheer number of iconic scenes with memorable soundtracks attached to them. Reiner and Buri- Just Hiroki Sawano, bro. That's why Hiroki Sawano is the go- 
the amount of animes that he's covered with the soundtrack enhancing the show. And there's also many mid animes too, where he has the soundtrack and the soundtrack just fucking carries the mid. It was revealed with you see big girl blaring in the background, Shoya looking around as Kensuke Ushio's lit plays, the music kicking in as we are given a proper look at what Hira from Jojo Part 4 is like, title tracks from shows like Bleach, Shinsekai Yori, Death Note and more, and the Ultra Instinct theme from mm. Dragon Ball. I don't watch the show. It just makes it iconic, right? Without that sound, who knows? I, 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 I just think that can a great moment just get get away with poor sounds? Yeah, probably. But you could also say the exact inverse, where can a shitty show be enhanced way better by a great soundtrack? Absolutely. Show, but even I know about it. Music is extremely important and so is its usage. There are countless examples of excellent music use in anime. Here are some of my favorites. By the way, I won't actually play any of it. I, I think that Konosuba again is like the perfect example of how important sound is to enhancing the let's say the, co the, the, the what Konosuba is good at and that's the comedy the humorous soundtracks the way the whimsical nature of the sound effects everything about it it just makes the comedy so much better go listen to it yourselves japanese companies don't play around when it comes to copyright absolutely Gojo and geto's confrontation in jjk season 2 episode 5 despite being a depressing scene features a surprisingly upbeat ost and that's because while the scene might be depressing for gojo and for us the audience it is liberating for geto it's him breaking free from the cycle and the story is told from his perspective the fight between rengoku and akaza from demon slayer is another example of perfect scoring. The fight started with Akaza's theme with this cold, metallic, auto-tuned vocal sample. But as the fight progressed, Rengoku's theme bled into the soundtrack and by the end, only his theme played. By the way- Yeah, and like, you know, these themes are supposed to represent like, what is like the shift in the momentum during the story, right? When the bad guy is having this moment, the bad guy theme is playing. Then suddenly, boom, soundtrack changes. Now it's time for the good guy to pop off, right? And even in Beyblade, when we're watching right now, it's just, if you just pay attention to when the soundtrack changes, it's like, uh oh, we're struggling right now. Oh shit, it's the main character's theme. Something good's about to happen. And then you can also bait the audience by thinking, okay, something amazing is happening. The main character soundtrack's playing. Psych. We're going to abruptly cut the soundtrack out of nowhere to have a shock moment where the bad guy suddenly just defeats the good guy, right? There are so many creative ways to enhance a show using sound. Yeah, Kaza's theme was complemented perfectly by the- Yeah, or, or the most classic thing. In an anime finale, what happens? Usually the opening doesn't play, but even if it plays, right? At the play as in like the beginning of the episode, but usually during the conclusion of some sort of climax moment in a season finale, of an anime, the opening starts to play. And it's just this traditional thing that happens in anime culture and you know that everything is gonna be good. Blue colors around him, blue being a cold color. More about Rengoku's theme, it's grand and orchestral and it sounds warm. And guess what his powers are? Fire. Also, as Rengoku got closer to death, his theme, which is symbolic of warmth and life, played louder. And you guys wonder why I think Demon Slayer is so good from an adaptation POV. It's mm. because of stuff like this. Yes, Demon Slayer, again, Say what you will about the lackluster story, but the production value and the way that Ufotable knows exactly how to adapt the manga to make it way better in anime form, they're killing it, man. Music is more than cool songs playing in the background. They can complement a scene in more ways than one, as I just demonstrated. Yep. Somewhat unrelated, but I recently came across a guy who said MAPA fixed Attack on Titan's ending by playing sad music over the last few scenes. Not really relevant, but I okay. wanted to mention it. When you okay. consider all of those things, animation, visual direction, storyboards, music, sound design, and more, the true importance of production value becomes obvious that yeah and honestly i think this video has convinced me that production value is more important than story i think that i still so but but production value is the common into his definition is the combination of everything involved right i had the mindset of as long as the story is good i don't mind if the animation is bad but the more that i've been watching seasonal anime and covering it and hearing other people's opinion that mindset slowly starting to change to the point where I do agree that story is necessary, but production value can 
be more important, right? And I think this video has perfectly explained that. There's more to it than making a scene look and sound cool, although that is important. Sight and sound put the audio and visual in audiovisual. Yep. Reducing critiques aimed at these aspects to nitpicking is extremely stupid in my opinion. And that just about does it. Bit of a random topic, but I hope it was interesting. That's about it. was very interesting. I love the way that he defined production value. How he separated into separate categories, gave different examples to highlight his talking point, and just fantastic overall. Please go give Mr. Probably Pretentious a like on the video. Here's the link. Go check it out. Support his channel if you like, and I will see you next time.